can't. No, I mean, I can't see it there. So I'm going to have to kind of watch this to guide me because okay. we're not in sync te technologically. So, hey, let's start over. <laughs> thanks for your patience and um, thanks for being here. And um, again, we're talking about how to make more of an impact with your on your homepage with design tips. And your homepage has an important purpose. It needs to quickly and clearly make a connection with your viewer and encourage them to keep, keep clicking because we want them to stay on your website, right? And our home pages need to make a great first impression within the first five to seven minutes. Can you hear me? Okay. Seconds. Did I say minutes? I'm so not a multitasker. No way. I think that seven is actually more than what most people are willing to do. So we really need to make those seconds count. Um, and to do that, we need to declutter our page and keep only the most important elements to make sure that we use those seconds wisely. And this idea came to me last year when I hauled over 10 full bags of clothes out of my closet. I kid you not. That is not my closet. I wasn't smart enough to take the picture before I did it. And it took a lot of sessions to do it. I had old stuff in there, jeans that didn't fit that I thought, oh, maybe one day. Um, <laughs> styles, waiting for them to be rotated, nope, didn't happen. <laughs> Things I was holding on to, waiting for the perfect occasion, that never came. Right. And uh, so I went ahead and got rid of that stuff. And I have to admit that I was taken by the minimalism movement that is very <laughs> huge right now, and it's a global trend. Um, people are decluttering, downsizing, and basically living with less. And a good example of that is the tiny houses and capsule wardrobes. Um, I haven't been in a tiny home yet, but I'm sure we've all been uh, heard of them. Um, I think there was one at Hunt City Market for a little while that you could tour, but I didn't get a chance to. But it's all about decluttering and keeping the things that are very important and not fooling with and maintaining what really isn't useful for you. And that's, got, that's what inspired this talk. What are the minimal things that we need on our homepage to be effective? Because there's a lot we could put there, but it's not necessarily going to serve you, your business, your nonprofit, or the person that's using it. And that's the most important person. And by doing that, you don't have deci decision fatigue, which is a real thing. Um, so back to this closet. So like me getting rid of all those shoes and handbags, um, think about your, si your site the same way. And like our overflowing closets, our digital worlds are overloaded, and it's not just us. Those who visit your home pages are also feeling burdened by too much stuff and too much, much content. And by decluttering your homepage and focusing on clean, clear communications, your site will be more powerful and it will be easier to use. So <clears throat> maybe you have a favorite dress or a pair of pants that you're holding on to for no sensible reason. Um, think about your site in the same way and get rid of the items that you may have once loved but may not be serving you anymore. They could be, in fact, obscuring, obscuring your message and leading your users <coughs> into confusion. My name is Allison Chandler, and I work with purpose-driven brands to achieve clarity through visual brand identities and websites. I've worked in design, and I don't want to cough while I say this, because I don't know, I'm getting close to 40. Um, for uh, over 15 years, the first 10 were mainly in print. And I fell in love with website design. And I mean this honestly, not to be cheesy. It's because of this freaking community, y'all. Great community. <laughs> I love you guys. And uh, so it is a privilege to speak to you today. And um, I am from Atlanta, and I love the Atlanta WordPress community. So this site is for you if your website is beautiful, but something's off. It's not working. You could have even paid $10,000, but if there's no strategy behind it, it's not working. 
um, maybe it's cluttered and you have too much information. Maybe you wrote it yourself and may not be trained to know what needs to stay and what needs to go. And people are challenged. Uh, if people are challenged to think on your website, they're probably going to move on because there are others that have clean websites. And you could be, you could have the better product. But if someone in your competition has an easier to use website, you're losing business. Perhaps there's no call to action um, or you have a call to action that people aren't using. So hopefully today you're going to learn how to make those more effective. And maybe you're embarrassed to send people to your site because it's not where you want it to be. You might be here to learn how to get your site to look better. I know there's a lot of people. This is where I learned to work with WordPress sites and maybe you're just getting started out. Perhaps you're messaging and your images are vague. So if you take action on what you learned today, you're going to be able to grow your list and nurture leads that convert. <laughs> You'll be able to increase sales and grow your business with more of a strategic homepage. And oops, you'll be able to speak to your audience in a way that draws them in and keeps them engaged and you'll be confident in your choices about what to keep on your homepage and more equally or more importantly what to toss. These are the topics we're going to cover. Excuse me. Got warm in here. Um, the tips I'm going to share with you to help with your homepage, help it to stand out and make more of an impact we'll cover these topics. We're going to talk about the minimal design elements for your home page. We're going to go over my process that I use to fully immerse myself into my clients' businesses and a case study example to show you how this process works and the results it brings. And then it's going to be your opportunity to review your home page considering what you learn here today and you'll be pre prepared to make changes. So let's make it easy for others to know who you are and why they should care. So the first topic is the minimal design elements. Remember the story about the closet? Um, so that inspired me to identify what we should declutter and what we should keep. And once all the noise is gone, here's what's left. A user-focused design. Your design needs to speak to what your audience thinks is important. Not necessarily what you think is important. If you have a shiny new mission statement or a new award, that would be better on your about page. And the first image on your home page, the hero image, should make an emotional connection and grab the attention of your user. And you need room to breathe. Prioritize clarity and white space over clutter and keep it simple. And then last but not least, you're going to motivate your homepage viewers to take the next step by doing the first three things. That's going to guide them to get there. So you need to know what it is you want your viewers to do. Do you want them to make an appointment with you? Buy something? Volunteer? By knowing what you want them to do, you can think about who your user is and that's going to inform the rest of your decisions. Studies show that 90% of information transmitted to the brain is visual and they are processed 60,000 times faster than text. So let's choose those images wisely. Watch out for cheesy images like this, which even Vince Vaughn knows is cheesy. <laughs> um, so who is your target market? And I may say target market or dream client. I use a lot of those phrases, but they all kind of mean the same thing. Who's on the other end of these beautiful, magical websites that we design? A lot of my clients sometimes tell me, it's everyone. And uh, I cringe a little bit, but I understand it's my job to help them understand how narrowing it can make them more effective and achieve their success. So um, I have a little, uh, little exercise. Those of you sitting on the floor, just, you know, if you feel compelled to, 
please stand up, and this is an invitation for everyone in the room, please stand up if you answer yes to the following question. You are here to learn about WordPress. <laughs> we all just sit and raise our hands. Yeah, okay, okay. Getting ready for lunch, a little tired maybe. Um, okay, so do you build websites for people other than yourself? All right, okay, it seems about the same. Is that, uh, would y'all say? No, is that less? I can't see, I, I mean, I can't tell, because I just can't. Um, so let me ask you this. Do you build websites for online courses? One hand, two, three, four. There's about four or five hands. You can see how those qualifying questions narrowed this room down to four people. This is the power of what narrowing in on who it is that you serve is going to make for you. So the clearer you can identify your audience, the more they will be attracted to you and ultimately want to work with you. So we're going to go a little bit into my process. These are kind of the four phases. The first is discovery which of course is me immersing myself into their brand, learning all about them, and that's going to inform my design. <clears throat> and there's a lot that goes into discovery. Um, it was really hard for me to narrow it into these four topics. Um, and then there's design, of course, and that, you know, all of these can be their own presentations themselves. Um, and then the development, which is once the look and feel is approved, it's time to build the website. And then delivery, you get the designs out there and get the results. Within my discovery phase, there are several things I do there. But today, we're gonna talk about the result of my discovery phase, which is the brand story. And these are the, these are the things that I'm looking to get answered from my clients. Sometimes I send a worksheet, Sometimes I meet with them on the phone. Um, it's a little uh, time consuming, but those that are willing to do it, love it and love the results. And the first person is the hero of the story. This is the main character. And what, it is that they're, what is it that they're looking for? This is your dream client or target audience. What obstacles are getting in their way of getting that result that they want? We need to know what their pain is, what's getting in their way. And then you position yourself as the guide because you have the services and products that is gonna help them get to where they wanna go. And then let them know that you have a plan to get them there and give them an idea of what it's like to work with you, which is what I'm doing right now. And then you are going to have results. And by knowing what the transformation looks like, you can design around that. And so I'm gonna go into some questions, but this is kind of the main framework that I'm looking to fill. I don't ask these questions. People don't know how to answer these questions right off the bat. So I have to be more descriptive and more direct um, with some questions. So, yes. Sorry, when you mentioned the hero, are yeah. you talking about the hero of this fictitious story of yeah. who the client is, or are you talking about the hero is your client, the ABC company? Mm -hmm. what? That's a great question. And when I learned this framework, um, I got tripped up by the th same thing. Um, because one, we have a client, right? Or, you know, whoever we're working with, it could be, it, we could be designing for ourselves. We're not the hero in this framework. We're the guide because we are offering our services to someone else. Oh. And in that situation, it's the hero, the hero that needs the products or services that okay, the website is for. Is the hero. No. no your client's audience. Client. 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 Client's clients, too removed. The client's audience. Yes. Okay, that's where I was confused. Think about the person it that's using the site. It just wasn't the end user. Yeah, it's the end user. But that's a great question and others could be confused. So, thank you for asking. <clears throat> okay, so we're going to go into a case study and show how this works. It's, um, 
it really is a uh, easy framework, and um, it, it, it is more simple than um, maybe I make it sound. So uh, Janine Yep, she's the business owner of the case study we're going to walk through, and she says that the website came out beautiful, way beyond what I thought it could be. My favorite part was working with Allison and seeing how all the steps and elements came together for the final result. And then Judy Knight, whom I've nicknamed WordPress Godmother of Atlanta, <laughs> um, says that I love her client design process and the beautiful detailed work that comes from it. She gives her clients exactly what they didn't know they wanted, but is perfect. Now, I don't know about that, but I appreciate it, Judy. <laughs> so the case study is back to Janine Yep's website. She's amazing. She has this business in San Francisco um, that's geared towards uh, taking dogs on great adventures during the day. And her hero is people that are working. What she offered was special and more than any other dog walkers in her area were offering. She saw where people would take the dogs maybe to like the beginning of a trail and turn around and go back. She would take the trail and find out where it goes, and she found amazing exclusive locations that she could use to build um, packs, dog packs. They're, they become family-like packs, um, but we'll get more into that. But she went the extra mile. This was her website when she came to me. She had been using it for a little while, um, and she was ready to step it up. Her, her website was blending in with the competition. She said that one of her competitors used the exact same theme. She could look at it and tell. Um, <laughs> and her, there's no headline. Her services are not clearly described. You have, to, you have to really work to figure it out. So people are going to move on quickly. And her expertise, her passion, and her personality doesn't come through. And she has it. She's a one-woman show and people need to know her. Because you know what, for someone to come into your home and pick up your dog, like they need to be like a family member, not some stranger. And her logo was misleading. She found that people that had small dogs thought she only worked with big dogs from her logo. So who is her audience? Hey. <laughs> um, I'm going to take you through uh, some questions now. Boop, boop, boop. Screw the notes. I'm going to have to look at them. So here, here's some questions that I asked her, because I, I have the, question, the answers written down. Janine, describe your typical customer, what they do for a living, and what are their values? These look like boring, generic questions, but guess what? We're going to get some fun results. Um, her answers are, they are affluent, well-educated professionals who work in the tech or finance industries, and they love their dogs and spoil them like children. <laughs> they appreciate, that's actually, I know them. <laughs> and I did get permission. <laughs> um, they appreciate reliability, honesty, and professionalism, and they are willing to pay a premium for good service. How do people find you? Because she did already have a great following and people found her through Yelp. She had already won awards in her area, um, but she was losing business because of that site. Um, and people found her through Yelp. And then she would talk to others who were looking for people like her, um, but they got lost in the sea of choices, in the sea of bad design. What are the struggles they are facing that you can help them with? They feel guilty about working long hours and leaving their pet at home. <laughs> they get distracted at work, thinking about what he might be tearing up in the house that day. <laughs> they feel confused about hiring someone because there's so many to choose from and they're not sure who they can trust. What would their ideal outcome look like what do they want? Remember, the hero is her client. They want their dog to have a great day without them. They can be at work, and the dog gets to go outside, have fun, and get plenty of exercise. And the pet owner is happy because she can go out now after work, have some drinks, and get her social life back. <laughs> because previously, she had to run home after work to take her dog out, take him on a dog walk, and y'all, you know you get tired at the end of the day, that's a big task. 
So the outcome is that they get a peace of mind knowing they found someone trustworthy who feels like family to help them give their dog what is needed. So this is what failure looks like. And the dog is lonely and depressed, barking all day and annoying the neighbors. Maybe embarrassed to go outside of the house, having to deal with them, ugly looks. Um, they feel trapped by their work duties with no time to take care of their dog. And they feel inadequate because they can't give the dog what he needs and craves. What solutions does Canine Fitness offer? These two pictures on the right are from Janine. Um, so she offers off-leash dog walks to amazing exclusive locations with transportation included. And the dogs get a chance to bond with other dogs and they become a family-like pack. And if she, if she interviews a family and takes their dog out with the pack and they don't get along, she doesn't take that client. They're, to get, they're together for a lot of hours. And she offers the relief for them to get their life back because they know their pet is well cared for. They can come home from a long day of work and cuddle. <laughs> Yay! <laughs> I know that's a lot of questions, but it yields great results. Yeah. And I'm ready to show you the results that it comes to. They drive the look and feel. So, um, okay. Again, we have maybe five seconds to make a great first impression. So the content really needs to be strong and remove a lot of unnecessary words. So by using the brand story that I wrote from getting all those questions, this is the copy that was written for the hero section. Dog walking in San Francisco, we go the extra miles. Seeking off-leash dog adventures in San Francisco filled with exercise, socialization, and fun, you're in the right place. This is the copy without even being with an image. So you can see that this is user-focused. It answers to what the client is looking for and the problems that they're facing. Does this sound like you? You didn't expect your dog to be so energetic. Sometimes you feel guilty because your dog is at alone a lot. You worry that your dog doesn't get enough socialization and you wish you could go out after work, but your dog needs a walk. Trust us, after your dog spends a day with canine fitness, you won't have to rush home after work. So the idea is that when the end user is reading this, they're resonating with this and realizing, wow, she really knows me and I can't wait to see what she offers. And coming from an image perspective, this was her old logo. It looks like a um, just clip art that could have been bought anywhere. This might be a Fiverr logo, I don't know. Um, but it's kind of masculine and Janine's concern was that it could be excluding small dog owners. So I had the chance to redesign a new logo for her that had more of a genuine um, hand feel that just had more personality and was more upscale. And this is what we ended up with. Um, I worked with an illustrator to do a scratch board. It, it's not showing up very clear, but <coughs> I mean, you can see it, but you can't see the detail. And I know we talked about detail earlier. I'm not gonna get into that, but there are options of this for different sizes that it was used in. But you have the large dog and the small dog. And she does have a German Shepherd. That's what inspired this business. So we kept the German Shepherd. And we used pictures of her dog for this illustration. So Canine Fitness, Dog Walking Reinvented. It, it's got the same stuff, but it looks and feels totally different and creates a different atmosphere that is gonna really draw in her ideal client. This is what I chose for the hero image on her website. She took this image as well. She takes like, she used to post 20 images a day on Instagram for the, the owners of the dogs. And in San Francisco, they may be called prep for uh, pet providers, I don't know. <laughs> I think that was a thing about 10 years ago, um, rather than pet owners. Um, so this is the trail I was talking about. She takes them down the trail and to the beach where other dog, owner, I mean, other dog walkers, her competition would just come here and stop. And putting it all together, this is what her hero section looks like. 
<coughs> we put all the pieces together. Um, the dog's facing the headline, we've got the logo, and you can see how the copy and the image work together. And she's letting you know we go the extra mile. Not showing it, but you know you feel it. And it's not cluttered, and it's very clear what to do. Um, and, and then learn more, that goes to the about page. And the about page is the second most visited page on a website, and that's where she wanted people to go because she wanted people to contact her. That was her preferred call to action. And then this is um, the next portion of the website. We're not going to go all the way down. I'm just kind of showing you the top portion of the home page because this is where you really need to make the biggest impact. The footer is very important, but that could be a session into itself as well. Um, so this next session section shows the content that I just um, read for you. And, and the, where the blue is, that's like the answer to all of those questions. If you feel this way, well, trust me, they're not going to feel that way at the end of the day after working with us. Um, so we have an earthy color palette without it feeling too crunchy. Um, there's a good feminine and masculine feel, as, whereas before it was very masculine. Um, what, what's the logo up at the top in the diamond shape? That is an icon. I created uh, custom icons okay. for different sections of her website that had the same look and feel as her logo. Um, let's see. And then the next section goes into more about um, addressing the benefits of working with her. And then that call to action goes to the page that's, that talks more about that adventure she takes them on. So we've got wide space, it's easy to look at, it's a fun atmosphere, very user focused, and her calls to action are very, um, hi. Question, um, because I fight with one of my developers on this, you used um, cursive writing. Mm -hmm. Last year I spoke about typography. I agree, there's a lot of typefaces here. I don't mean just now. Just okay. The okay. What's the question then? Well, uh, because uh, there was a, a period there where I think you're not even teaching it in school, and so I'm just right. interested to know why, you, why you're using it. Her audience can read it. Okay. And it's different. It stands apart from the other copy. So it's just a different mood for me. It was a nice juxtaposition of the mood that the viewer is feeling as they're going through it. But it's a great question. <laughs> I haven't had to face that yet. Is this the home page or the about page? This is the home page. Okay. This is the hero section. This is the what? The first section. And then you go further down. This is still the home page. Oh, I see. Okay. That's the top. The oh, sorry. Uh, so I, I guess I should have kept the same image. My bad. Same page. Where is the cursive writing she is speaking? The blue. Okay, I'm already reading it, okay. Yeah. So that's where it says trust us after a day with a canine. Oh, yeah. See you get to go home and cuddle. So does the learn more go to another page or just? Yes. The learn more goes to her about page, okay. which is what, where they can contact her directly and that's what she wants. Okay, yes, hi. Taking off my designer hat, putting on developer hat, are you using web fonts for that cursive or are you using a graphic? It's a web font. Okay. Yes, because SEO is important and we've got canine fitness in there again. Okay, ready to move on? Okay, so, oh, yeah, sure. Um, and sorry, my eyes aren't great. Um, is there a menu? Yeah. There's a menu, when you scroll down, I can see next time I give this presentation, I should just show what happens when you scroll down because that's when the menu pops up and you've got another version of that logo coming up on the top left section. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, because we're not gonna show this big logo all the way through. Um, so there's another version that comes up that's smaller, but it just basically drops out the bottom half. Um, so I will do that next time. I can clearly see that was confusing, and I apologize. Thank you for the <laughs> feedback. Um, we're always learning. So you can see how the information I gathered in the discovery phase informed the creative choices. This ensures that the results are user-focused with clear calls, calls to action that lead to working, working directly with canine fitness. So 
This is your opportunity to take what you've learned today and apply this stuff to your site. Can you point out the call to action section? Section. Or the piece that's the call to action? Um, this, it, you really can't see it very clear. Um, in the blues, okay, let's go up one. Learn more is a call to action and also that arrow bounces which is encourages them to move down. And then here, the call to action is in the um, teal section. It says off leash dog adventures. Okay. And it clearly looks like a button because it has an outline on it. Okay. Yet. Okay. I'll make that more obvious next okay. time. Okay. Yo, I totally redid this on Wednesday. <laughs> What's that? Oh, thank you. That is important. <laughs> What did he say? I didn't that the mobile, he, he complimented the mobile site. It's a little different. Oh, okay. What about the about page? What would be on the about page? We're not going to go there. I appreciate the question, um, but this is about your home page. Oh, sorry. Sorry. That's okay. Is this a live site we can actually look at? And yeah. Look yeah, it's right, it's right here. It's right here. Hey, what's, yeah. what's the... Uh, K9 Fitness SF for San Francisco. Yes. I was just going to say, y'all check out the what? Just just Dot check out the website, website, and it all makes sense. Thank right. you. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Just go to the website. Just go to the website. website. <laughs> Thanks. Oh, thank you. Yes, hi. You made the comment on the mobile. Did you pick a theme that was responsive, and so it did the mobile? Because you made a comment there, or did you do a separate version? Well, I, I design offline because I have a print background, and then I take it and build it. So I'm not really using a theme per se. I'm using Beaver Builder. You should learn it. Yeah. I love Beaver Builder. You can take stuff and make it happen. If you took that stuff, if you did the mobile, you kind of did a customized station on that thing. Yeah. And there's, there's easy, user-friendly ways to do that within Beaver Builder. Gotcha. Yeah, it's a great um, program. Yes? Imagery. Do you have customers that don't have or can't provide you with images? So do you, you know, subscribe to a stock company? Um, do you, let me see. How does that work? Um, imagery, yes. I was fortunate that she had ph photography in this case. I do use a lot of stock. Um, there's a lot of stock out there now that's affordable and not cheesy. So um, it's good to keep an eye on what the visuals look like and how they work together. Sometimes I'll have a um, photographer take stock images and edit them to make them look and feel like they were all taken by the same person so it's not jarring as someone's viewing it. So they can be a great resource. So when people come to me saying, I hate stock images, I'm like, hate's a big word. Mm -hmm. Let's talk about this. <laughs> <laughs> um, so I, I was going to have a handout for you guys tonight, but I literally finished this right before we started. Um, I, I did change it on Wednesday. But I, I, the intention is for it to be understood. Um, so I just wanted to make it a little clearer. That's, uh, so make an impact with your homepage by implementing what you've learned. By doing this, you'll have a user-focused homepage that's easy for others to understand what you provide, who can benefit most from what you offer, and how they can begin to work with you. And if you text me here, um, I'm, I've got something set up with MailChimp to where I'm going to know exactly who you are. And um, by the end of the day, I'll send you the PDF that I use that you can actually go into and type. Um, that has a lot of the questions that I use. And if you're working on your site or somebody else's site um, or even somebody else doing your site, they're great questions to consider so that you know who your user is. Wait, wait, wait. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Thanks, y'all. I know that we had some te technical difficulties, but we made it. You're great. Oh, thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Any questions? I know we have already had some. I don't know what time it is. How are we doing? We good? Okay.
I do have a question. So your 66866 is the same as Sue's? No. Is her 66866? Oh, okay. Oh, it's the message, yeah. So you'll put in homepage impact, and that makes it me. Got it. Thank yeah. you. We both learned about this tool this week. Okay, thank you. That yeah, very it's very efficient. So, so it's amazing. That was the quickest part of getting ready for this. And it, you said it was through Survey Monkey? Or MailChimp? No, I don't remember even who this is, but it hooks up to my MailChimp. Okay. Yeah, I don't even remember the app that I used. Um, but I got the first free 30 day trial. <laughs> yeah. So I could get this stuff to you. Cool. <laughs> yep. Any more questions? Is there a font? Um, Site or that you would recommend? Yeah. Um, I use Adobe products and they've made an incredible um, site that is called. I can't remember. I have a hard time remembering technical stuff like on the spot, but I did give like a whole presentation just about typography last year. Um, Google Fonts is great. Ah, oh, Google Fonts is a great place to start. Thank you. Yes. Oh, and I have business cards too if you want one.